This video covers standard level content from C2.2 on neural signaling, and we're going to look at transmission between neurons. Now you'll often hear this referred to as synaptic transmission, and this refers to this area called the synapse. The synapse is a gap between two cells, um, and it's a gap in which neurotransmitters serve as messenger molecules between those cells. It can be between a neuron and a neuron. So I think that's maybe the more classic example, neurons passing messages to other neurons, but it doesn't have to be. It could be a neuron to an effector organ, like a muscle, or a neuron and a sensory organ. Okay, so anytime we're connecting a neuron to something, it's going to pass a message across the synapse in the form of a neurotransmitter. So let's see what that might look like. Here I've drawn a synapse, right? So the end of the presynaptic neuron and the beginning of the postsynaptic neuron. And this action potential is going to reach the terminal end of the presynaptic neuron. Now remember that action potential is that wave of positive voltage. Um, we covered that in a different video. And that wave of positive voltage is going to cause these calcium ion channels to open. They are voltage gated. Now on the outside of the presynaptic neuron is a high concentration of calcium ions. So now that that voltage gated cap, uh, calcium ion channel is open, these calcium ions are free to enter the cell via facilitated diffusion. Once that happens, it's going to force these vesicles full of neurotransmitters to fuse with the membrane. So I have neurotransmitters here in blue, okay? And again, this red arrow is that action potential, okay? But these neurotransmitters are going to be released into the synapse when these vesicles full of neurotransmitters fuse with the membrane. Okay, so at this point here, this action potential has forced calcium into the cell or allowed calcium into the cell and forced these neurotransmitters into the synapse. These neurotransmitters are going to bind with receptors on the postsynaptic uh, neuron, okay? And so when that binds, it's going to cause ion channels to open. So it depends on what exactly this postsynaptic cell is, if it's another neuron or if it's something else. This receptor may also act as in an ion channel. So once those sodium or voltage-gated sodium ion channels open, then sodium can enter into the cell via facilitated diffusion. And now we've started a new action potential in our postsynaptic cell okay so it's traveling this way that of course is initiated by the movement of these sodium ions okay so once all that has happened and we've started this action potential in the postsynaptic cell the neurotransmitter should really be removed from the synapse that's because we don't want a continued message going on like message 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 we don't want that okay so this neurotransmitter needs to be removed from the synapse there's a couple of ways that could happen um, it could either be um, repumped or there could be a reuptake mechanism back into the presynaptic neuron or an enzyme that comes along here and and destroys it but either way that is an important step here and let's take a look at an example shall we so acetylcholine is a neurotransmitter that you will hear about in many topics and it is a neurotransmitter that is responsible for carrying messages between neurons and muscles okay so it's a muscle contraction neurotransmitter when that acetylcholine is binding to um, a postsynaptic cell, so on that muscle, it's going to give that message of contract, contract, contract. Well, we don't need that message all the time. So there's an enzyme called acetylcholinesterase, ASE for enzyme, acetylcholine. Look, it's in the name, we love that. And it's going to come into this synapse and it's going to break down that acetylcholine. So this acetylcholinesterase enzyme will come along here and 
whap, 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 okay, break down all of this acetylcholine. Now, it breaks down into two parts, acetyl and choline, okay, choline is then going to be reabsorbed back into the presynaptic neuron in order to manufacture more acetylcholine. And then if you're studying this at higher level, um, acetyl might remind you of some things from cell respiration, but anyways, the big point here is that this enzyme is responsible for um, destroying the enzyme or destroying the neurotransmitters or ridding them from this synapse after we've already done the job of getting that new action potential into the postsynaptic cell.